great gift idea. You're absolutely right. And it's not too early to start. I mean, again, we always think in terms of feeding birds in the winter. We're in August now, but start now because by the time you get into October, you're going to have a fully established feeding station that everything in your area hopefully is visiting, and then you can get that pleasure all through the, through the winter and for years to come. What, what, what kind of birds do you normally deal with? Uh, my normal uh, birds I'm dealing with is owls, because uh, I'm an owl conservationist. Um, and um, of course, some people do have owls coming into their garden. Um, I've got two owls that live in my garden that I work with, my educational birds, um, which are obviously um, captive birds. But, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the thing about um, owls. They're a, a, a top predator. They, there's a food chain with owls, voles being their sort of um, main prey for a lot of the species of owls. You can, not everybody can encourage owls into their garden. So let's look at other wildlife because all wildlife is valuable to us. Um, and like with the, the bees, if we lose bees, we lose us. They're essential for pollination of all the, the things that we, we eat that grow in, uh, in, in the ground. Um, so we've got to think about uh, ways we can help them, which is why it's a good subject to be interested in. And, and really, it's, it's a very, a very little that we're asking of you to, to help, but it can make such a big difference, can't it? It can, and for anybody who's not actually done it before, once you start getting into uh, uh, any form of helping wildlife in your garden, it becomes very addictive, and suddenly you realise you've discovered a whole new world, and then you start caring about, like I do, I go around looking for my little toad, and I feed <laughs> little mice, and... <laughs> You know, and you see lots of new things, and it's 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 really really nice for your life. It's good stuff. You get you get attached to your wildlife; they become like pets, don't they? Well, you do, and I mean, obviously, there are sort of uh, the villains. Um, you know, get me onto birds of prey and sparrowhawks. Of course, being a bird of prey conservationist, I'm going to defend the sparrowhawk. <laughs> but if you get sparrowhawks coming into your garden, it's because you've got lots of birds coming into your garden. So it's all part of nature. So yes. um, everything has its place. Um, the worst situation for wildlife is bricks and gravel. Nothing can live in bricks and gravel, so this is why we're doing more harm um, with the way that we're often um, managing our gardens than wildlife is doing to, it, to itself. Once you've just got to leave wildlife to its own, it'll find its own level. This is just a subtle way of giving them a little bit of help. But as I said earlier, you, you take so much pleasure when, first of all, you know that you're helping um, wildlife, nature, the environment, but the reward that you get back again when, when your visitors come back and they revisit you, because you're helping them, they'll get to know you. We had our ladybird house. <laughs> Brilliant! If you've got roses or if you're troubled with green fly and black fly, because that's uh, that's meal time for these little devils, isn't it? It is. And um, ladybirds um, need refuge, um, and in the winter they need an overwintering site. And of course, ladybirds will be on the menu for uh, for larger predators. So this is where the refuge um, comes the birds in. Birds eat ladybirds. Uh, birds will eat ladybirds and uh, other other um, uh, predators of them. But of course, they're beneficial because they're eating the aphids. Yes. Um, and um, this is where they can help you if you've got lots of roses or other plants that attract aphids. And so, are... will I see anything interesting happening or will they just go in and out? Well, um, th this is, um, uh, let's say, inside here we've got um, uh, sort of straw. Um, you okay. can, on the open market, you can get attractants that, um, that you will put in here and the ladybirds will pick up on that, uh, on that scent and that will encourage them in there. Um, but the idea is you would actually put this ne nearer an aphid problem. And generally where you've got aphids, you're going to have ladybirds around anyway because yeah. they'll find them and this then is giving them um, um, a little hideaway. hideaway so would form. they breed in here as well? Um, they'll, they'll certainly breed and you can actually also uh, incidentally, um, you can, to, if, to give your garden a boost, is you can buy ladybird larva from um, some of the larger oh, um, yeah. garden centres which you can introduce into this product and then they'll eventually become the ladybirds and uh, it's, it's thinking about using nature to control the problems you have with the gardens if you're a gardener, not reaching for the chemicals because the problem with chemicals is that it's indiscriminate and it can kill a lot of things. This is a, a great way of, um, of working um, with a predator, the, the ladybird, um, and of course um, solving problems within the garden at the same time. And it's a very attractive product, once again FSC timber, natural timber, um, and uh, the, the holes that we have here are upward facing so that water can drain out, lots of features built into it, and we've got some little... Uh, Ladybirds on the front, just to sh <laughs> remind them who just, it's for. Just to let them know where they live. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, ten pounds um, hedge Hedgehogs always seem, although they're, they're spiky little devils, so vulnerable. 
they are very vulnerable um, and this um, type of refuge for them um, gives them somewhere you can put this in the corner of your garden you can cover it in in leaves and uh, maybe logs because it's very strong it's got a, a, a rust coated wire um, mainframe with a, a waterproof membrane and an entrance tunnel that uh, will prevent uh, any predators getting in there it's a safe reg refuge for your hedgehogs Many, many hedgehogs are injured and maimed, and even gardens, we all know they get uh, run over by cars, they, they travel quite a distance each night looking for food, but when they rest up in the daytime, sometimes um, we unfortunately injure them, and this gives them a safe safe place. Are they endangered then? Hedgehogs are certainly um, a, in trouble. About 50% of hedgehogs born every year will be dead before the following year. Really? Um, and once again, the thing with hedgehogs is that we're using slug pellets and they eat a lot of slugs so the chemicals are killing them um, increased roads and increasing traffic is is having its toll on hedgehog populations um, so we do take hedgehogs for granted but like a lot of wildlife they're gradually slipping away and it's uh, the rescue centers get many many hedgehogs in mm. every year with lots of injuries and what we're saying to people here is if you have hedgehogs active in your garden um, then it, that hedgehog is going to have to rest up somewhere during the day. They only come out at night, they don't come out in the day. If you have a hedgehog out in the daytime, it's one that's in trouble, there's something wrong with it, it needs to go to a rescue centre. This is giving that your hedgehog um, a safe refuge. You can peg it down so that uh, if a fox finds it, it's not going to try and flip it over. Um, and um, it's just, again, doing your little bit for your friendly little garden uh, beneficial predator again. Another well, little predator that's coming in your garden and eating all the things <laughs> you don't want to nibble your plants. So they, they work for you, don't you? They, you get uh, payback time it's with, if with you wildlife. like. Would yeah. you get a couple of them in there? I mean, would, would, would they pair up? They pair up, possibly, yeah, if it was in the right situation. Um, they're obviously, if this was in the right situation, it was insulated with other natural products, then uh, there'd be no reason why they wouldn't hibernate uh, in, in here um, and um, potentially uh, uh, breed as well. But so uh, you've got to remember that um, in its as it is here, it won't be uh, a suitable for hibernation. So what you do is use this as part of a little corner for your hedgehog to put loads of leaves and, and, and wood and, and create that nice warm insulated area for them with the little entrance hole there. And that's... Uh, oh, and it wouldn't it be exciting when you get the hedgehogs in there as well? It's that's gone right. Again there. Well, as you mentioned the owls earlier on, not everybody has access to these birds, but, but that doesn't matter because I can tell you, anybody, no matter where you live in this country, you can have access to goldfinches, to greenfinches, maybe if you're lucky, bullfinches um, and obviously your robins, your blue tits, great tits. All these birds are so colourful and if you get them closer to your window you can really appreciate them. We've got some very, very uh, colourful birds in this country. It's like a tropical fish tank I often liken it to in your garden. And the thing is they are there. Those birds are there. They are there. They may there. not be in your garden right now but when you get your, your station that's a way of encouraging them into your garden. It is and, it, and anybody that says I never get birds in my garden and he, funny enough one of my neighbours says that to me and and the thing is, is that I think, well, okay, well, what are you doing in your garden? Very often they've got no plants, they've got no, no food resource, so why would a bird want to come in their garden? So birds, are, like any wildlife, they come in, to, they go looking for food. F food is survival. So if you're offering food in your garden, then eventually you're going to get the pleasure of these, uh, these little furry and, 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 and pollen to. for insects. And this is um, about thinking. If you went to live in, in a garden yourself, um, obviously we don't eat nectar, but um, we would want food and we'd want shelter. Well, wildlife's the same. So if you think food and shelter, if you don't know what that insect needs, you can look that up these days, so either on the internet or through resource books, and then start thinking about what food and shelter there is in your garden. And of course, again, the products we're offering here is offering some shelter for them, and of course the, the feeding station offering the food for birds, but planting wildlife-friendly plants in your garden brings in other wildlife, lots of insects, that would draw birds into your garden. So it's thinking in a different way, yeah. and um, often it's not so much about ignorance, it's just about perhaps thinking a little bit more. We're all, always so busy with our lives. It um, does. And look, the cat, I mean, I keep my, my partner, she um, moans at me about leaving nettles at the bottom of the garden because she says they're untidy. But uh, actually, she now she realises the value of them because, of course, we get the caterpillars on there from the butterflies, yes. and that's part of the, 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 the life stage of, of butterflies. And then later on, we get the, the butterflies themselves. So, you know, we've, we've built our wildlife garden, and she's now uh, looking after my margins and... Uh, <laughs> And, you know, uh, you know, encouraging me to do other things in the wildlife because she can see the benefit. And that's just about awareness, really.
we'll, uh, we'll make you aware of everything that we have in the show, um, if so you like. Uh, the question I want to ask you is, is there anything else we can do to encourage the birds into our garden? I know you're very keen for us to leave a wild area in the garden. Absolutely. I mean, um, the thing to remember is that a lot of birds feed on natural food, and these feeders are very, very valuable, but if you combine that with wildlife gardening, planting different types of plants, then you're going to provide cover for birds, you're going to um, offer them other types of food, and that's all part and parcel of this package. Um, and uh, very, very important. Um, and then you'll get all sorts of birds coming in your garden. Well, all I can spiders and things like that. These are the wildlife that does good. These are the good guys, if you like. They're the A-team of the, uh, the animal and insect world. We've got our birds. We've got our uh, solitary bees. We've got the, um, uh, we've got the ladybird tower as well. Uh, if you're using insecticides in your garden, maybe it's time to use a natural way uh, of um, protecting your garden. The birds will eat the insects, therefore, you might not need to use the insecticides. Um, so are we looking, I think we're looking at the complete uh, bird feeding station now, $29.99. A number of you on the phone gone for this. Uh, I'm really pleased because I think you'll get hours. Of, that we were talking about this earlier. We have cats, we have dogs, we have hamsters, we have fish, we have rabbits, we have pets. <laughs> yeah. But these are like having pets that you don't have to look after. Oh, do you know, I, I get, I mean, I'm sort of, uh, as I say, a, a wildlife enthusiast, but it, that enthusiasm has never um, abated because I get daily pleasure from my garden. Yeah, And absolutely. it's all free. Absolutely, yeah, it is. It's, it's like a soap opera playing out in your garden. Right, uh, I need to speak about the bee log, if you don't mind, because 20% of the bee log has gone now. Perhaps many of you have read and seen on the news about the dramatic demise in bee population populations in this country at the moment and quite how serious that is. Now I know that putting one bee log in your garden isn't going to change all that but it's you know another person does it another person does it and it becomes it sort of grows mm. um, uh, you know you're doing just your little bit but you're also doing your garden a favour as well. Many of our viewers will support charities that have nature reserves and that, but you can create your own nature reserve in your back yeah, garden. Yeah. Um, and bees are very valuable, and of course, the more of us that start turning our attention to uh, b insects like bees, the more that will benefit all of us, because without bees, we don't exist. No, absolutely. And we're not talking about the bees that are scary and that will sting you. We're talking about bees, the, the good bees, if you like. We're talking about the good bees, the solitary bees. Um, there's, we have many species of bees in this country, about 250. See, species, which a lot of people don't realise. Um, this uh, product is um, again FSC timber. It's made from a natural log, as you can see, mm. um, and it has little chambers that bees will find very, very attractive, and they'll 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 use that year after year. Fantastic.